Hello inmates, here we are in the barn with my good old trusty 2018 old. <laughs> but this is my this is my old bike. This is the bike that's like famous all over my YouTube channel. But look, it's got no Denali stuff on there whatsoever. That's because before we moved to this new premises, I stripped everything off it, knowing that I'd be buying the brand new R1250 GSA, which is currently in the house, stripped right down to pieces, wheels off, forks off the lot because it's being painted, as you saw in the previous video. If you haven't seen that, it's very, very popular, had a lot of hits, link up above. Whilst that's waiting to, to have lots of work done to it, I want to make more videos. And over the past two years, I've brought you lots of videos showing how to strip down the bike, how to put a whole Denali bundle on. And obviously those videos are quite long and I understand a lot of you don't wanna watch great big long videos. So I'm gonna try and keep this as quick and punchy as possible. So. All this is, is a straightforward D4 light pod installation. If you wanna know more, and you want to know how the cast mark goes on, how the sound bomb goes on, well, I'll put links up above and down below. Those videos will be coming later. Now, first of all, there's a lot of confusion with people where they don't know what mount does what, because there's a different light mount for every bike. Now, this is an R1200 GSA, not the R1200 GS, that's a different mount. Now, take a look at these mounts I've got on the side here. Now, these are all three mounts. So, the one at the top of the picture, that is the one that I designed myself. So, that is based on the R1200 GSA Adventure mount, and I modified it, cut it down so it will fit on the R1200 GS and the R1250 GS, both together. Now, the one in the middle of the picture, that is the R1250 GSA mount made by Denali, and the one at the bottom of the picture is the R1200 GSA mount, which we are fitting to this bike today. But just to show you the comparison between all of them, the video footage I'm showing you right now is showing the R1250 GSA mount in comparison with the R1200 GSA mount. The widths are very similar, but if you look at the angles of the down bars, they're completely different because you can't put the wrong mount on the wrong bike because it will clash with the fairings on the bike. Now that the video I'm showing you here, that is showing the modified mount that I make. That is a shortened down version of the R1200 GSA. As you can see it next to the R1200 GSA mount itself, you can see they are kind of identical back to back with the, the slopes going in the same direction, but the actual D4s come in slightly to avoid the fairings on the bike. So I'm not gonna show you how to strip this bike down because I've made those videos. If you want to see them, now there's a link up above for the R1250 GS, and I'll also put a link up above for the R1250 GSA and how to strip it down screw by screw so you can get it into the state where it's ready for all the stuff to go on. So let's crack on, let's get these D4 pods on and show you exactly how I do it. A few screws later and we've got it in the exact situation we want it to be in to get the lights on. So let's start getting it on now. So first of all, what we're gonna do, we're going to open up the bag of bolts and start to assemble one side of the bolts with the, the bush or the space or whatever you want to call it and offer that up to either side of the bike through this little hole just here. Now, there's a few little tips and tricks here because a lot of people, even myself included, when I first started fitting these, it's very easy to get the little shoulder stuck just before the hole as it comes up from underneath. And if it gets stuck and you start tightening in it, it will stay there. But eventually one day you'll go over a bump, it'll shake itself loose and, and then you'll have a whole complete loose bar and the lights will start shaking. So you need to make sure that you get that shoulder up through. So what we're gonna do is just hand tighten everything on, and then do the other side. Now you've got the whole bar on and it's all very loose and as you put your hand up underneath and feel the spacer, you can rotate it with your fingers because it's loose. And all we're gonna do is make, make sure as we start tightening up that that is definitely inside the hole from the inside so the shoulder is not stuck. And then once you definitely know it's properly seated in there, then tighten it 
up the whole way with a spanner at the top and a spanner at the bottom or a socket, whatever um, is easiest for you. Now, once it's like that, stand back from it and just make sure it's completely level with the front of the bike. So you're, so you're looking to make sure it's, uh, it's like um, level with the front grille of your bike or something else which is horizontal on the bike. Because if it's not, that means one of the shoulders is definitely out. So make sure you get that right. Bring the first D4 light pod over. Take off the nut with the plastic cover on top of it. Take off the washer as well. But leaving the bolt actually inside the D4 pod bracket, push it up through the hole on the mount. Once that's done, put the washer back on top, put the nut back on top, hand tighten that up. And then you only need one spanner on the top because uh, the D4 pod has little brackets underneath which hold onto the other side of the nut. So all we need to do is just make sure there's tension there and start tightening up that nut with a 13 mil spanner. Line it up so you're happy with it. Don't worry, we can fine tune everything right at the very end. Once you've got that nice and tight so it's not swiveling left and right, now we're gonna grab an Allen key, or for some of you out here in different parts of the world, call it a hex head. Grab a five mil Allen key or hex head and adjust the nuts on the side. So just loosen them off slightly. This then gives you the ability to lift and lower the light pod inside the bracket that it comes in. I personally like to have it all the way up so it doesn't look like it's swinging there. So bring it all the way up. Please note though, if you've got D7s, if you push it all the way up, it does limit how much rotation you can have for pointing it further upwards. And with D7s, I do recommend to only use them on full beam. And it's quite good to have, to have the ability to swivel them upwards more towards the sky, obviously not completely into the sky, but just so it's getting all of the distance right in front of you rather than just lighting up the road. Leave it about two mil from the top. Then tighten up those hex heads, those Allen keys. You should still be able to move it by having both hands on the light pod and slowly rotating it, but just so you can make adjustments later on. But don't go too mad tightening it all up. Now let's go across to the other side and put that D4 on there. Exactly the same. When the D4 comes to you from me, it has the hybrid lens already installed on the light pod. Now, the D4s, the Denali assume you're probably gonna stand it up because you can have this standing up or you can have it hanging down. Obviously, we're having it hanging from the bar and that's okay, but you've got these four hex heads here or Allen key fittings. So we're just gonna loosen these off right now and turn the lens around. And the reason we do that is because we want the floodlight at the bottom, because right now the spots are at the bottom and the floods are at the top. But ideally, we want the floodlights at the bottom and the spots at the top. However, don't concern yourself too much with the S4s. The S4s do not have interchangeable lenses, so you can't turn them around. So everyone thinks you have to have them standing up. Not so true. It's very, very different. The D4 has four very separate lenses on them and that they're, they're a lot further spread out than the S4s where the S4 has got you've got your four LEDs inside there but they're all kind of like of the same in the same area so really it's negligible whether you have it standing up or hanging down with the S4s don't worry yourself too much you won't actually see any difference in light pattern the S4s are just super bright anyway fantastic for daytime rain lights and they do quite a good job at nighttime too but the D4s are always going to win hands down for daytime and nighttime as a hybrid option. Now what we're going to do is thread the plugs that are coming from the back of the D4 pods and route them back as far as we can get them so they're ready when we want to connect them to the CanSmart via the harnesses that come with the Denali CanSmart. So starting on the, the left side, the right side as you're seeing it, the clutch side of the bike, what we're going to do is I like to take it up to the, the spacer coming from the mount so I route it backwards. We don't want it to be too tight, but we don't want it to be too slack either. So just a happy medium between the two, just in case you want to make alterations to the, the pod, 
by lowering it or swiveling it, you need to, a little bit of flex on that harness coming from the back of the pod. So I'm gonna get a zip tie and connect it to the spacer on the mount. And then I'm gonna start rooting it backwards above the piece of plastic you see there. And I'm gonna zip tie it to the existing cables and harnesses that are already on the bike. So it's following a very similar path. And now you've got the air intake on the side of the bike. So you need to come in behind that. Sometimes you have to slip it down behind the back of it. Sometimes you can go underneath or go around the front and then push it around. And you just find a route for it. So it's sitting nicely behind there. There's no moving parts here. So don't worry too much, but obviously you don't want to block the air vent. So the, ultimately you want to get that harness behind the air vent because if you go in front of it, you might find that the fairing panel might not sit as nicely as it did before before we took it off. So we're going to thread that behind there and then it literally finishes up just in front of the, of the, of the air box on the bike and where, where the tank is there, you can see it just poking out there. So in another video where I, I'll show you how to route the harnesses and install the can smart, you'll see we, we start there, we make a connection there and then we start running the harnesses back under the fuel tank to connect to the can smart at the back of the bike. And then on the other side, pretty much the same. We go up to the spacer, up to the bush, zip tie it to the bush and then start taking it backwards that is the horn that you see there so i'm going to zip tie it to the plug that is actually connecting the horn it's okay that all this is for there's no weight on this it's not it's not like bearing any weight load on that plug it's just a path that we're trying to find and keeping it all neat and tidy uh, the bike's covered in zip ties as it is already by bmw so a few more here and there isn't going to be an issue and then same again we're going to go through the back and we just leave it dangling just there above the radiator cap. Don't worry, it's not gonna stay on the radiator cap, it's not gonna to touch the radiator cap once we're finished. But that is basically it for now. All right, so that's it inmates. That is exactly how you fit a set of D4 pods. But that's the same principle with all of the light pod range from Denali. You get the mount, put it on the bike, that's how you do that. You put the pods on exactly like that. If you like that, then make sure you don't miss how to install the CanSmart side of it. Now, I do have older videos, so if you're watching this very, very new, if you're watching it because I've just released it, well, then the CanSmart video probably won't be out for another week or two. Maybe just a week, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just so busy shipping stuff out to you. Now, don't forget, I don't just make YouTube videos for YouTube. I don't rely on the income that YouTube pay me, so I'm not gonna sit here, or I'm actually on one knee, in the barn, freezing cold floor, but I'm, I'm not gonna stand here or kneel here and ask you to uh, watch advert series, but that's not how I make my income. I don't make a living out of YouTube. YouTube is just a way how I can market my company to show you, hey, this is me, Steve Abel, a bike thing. I put my money where my mouth is. I buy products, I buy stock. I have quite a good, actually a huge inventory of Denali, huge. So bear that in mind. If you like what you see, if you wanna buy some Denali gear, you want it on your bike, well, you buy it from me. I'm not just sitting here telling you how to fit stuff. I'm here telling you how to fit stuff. And hey, buy it from me. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like it or tell me why you did like it. And if you haven't already, why haven't you subscribed? I had, I've had 30,000 hits on a video I did last week. Loads and loads of likes. Uh, I think 1.2 thousand likes already in six, seven days. But I only gained 1.2 thousand subscribers. Only. I'm actually very impressed. I think it's pretty wicked. Stay safe behind bars. See you in the next one.